Hey everybody, welcome to What to Talk. This is our bonus show. We record it live each and every week exclusively on patreon.com slash what to talk. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by Mr. Paul Thorat. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. Pretty mm-hmm. good. It is Thursday. We're doing a show on Thursday today. Yeah. And I thought what a great way to do to celebrate that is Thursday with a throwback Thursday. And mm-hmm. you had uh, a an operating system that <laughs> was not very yep. popular, and a lot of people were not very happy with this. And of course, we're talking about Windows Millennium Edition. Windows ME. Right. The unfairly maligned Windows ME or Windows Me. So let's start off by saying what happened? (sighs) Well, (laughs) let's see. Uh, Whatever year, it'd be probably 1999 ish. I mean, Microsoft had a plan to transition from the DOS based versions of Windows, Windows 95, Windows 98 to NT. And it was originally supposed to happen with what a product that was originally called Windows NT 5.0, which became later became 2000. Windows 2000. Um, when I went to that reviewer's workshop, which resulted in me starting the super site for Windows, so August 1998, um, Windows NT 5.0, as it was called then, was going to be a super set of Windows 98 and Windows NT 4.0. It was going to do everything that both of those things did. Okay. And I, I distinctly remember asking, because this seemed a little incredible. It, it, it's, it's probably hard for people to remember this, but back in the very late 1990s, when we both when we had NT on the one side and Windows 9X on the other, um, both had their advantages and both had their disadvantages. Um, the disadvantages on the NT side were performance um, and also compatibility. And if you, if you needed like a printer or a, a scanner or a network card or whatever, you had to consult something called the Hardware Compatibility List, or HCL, mm-hmm. to make sure that the thing you were buying would actually work on Windows NT. Whereas if you went into the store like Best Buy and bought something like that for Windows 98, it was always going to work. Like those, That was yeah. 100%. There were a um, lot of things that did not work yeah, early on so, in Windows, yeah, in, in oh, NT, yeah, Windows yeah, 2000. Yeah. And it got better over time. Yeah. So um, I remember at that reviewer's workshop asking about a particular feature because Microsoft had something – that I think was called Web TV for Windows. And it was basically a way to watch TV over the internet in Windows. It was kind of a precursor of Media Center. I do not remember that. Very few people probably do. <laughs> but it was a feature in Windows 98. You can look it up. Um, and Yusuf Mehdi told me, yep, absolutely. If it's in Windows 98, it will be in Windows NT 5.0. And I thought, wow, that's incredible. I was so excited about it. I set myself down in a career I'm still... So at this point, was the goal to get rid? I mean, like you said, the goal was to move beyond that and go to NT as the future of Windows. Yeah, because uh, NT, for whatever performance or compatibility issues it may have had, had major advantages of a Windows 9X. And for one thing, it was a true 32-bit operating system with a flat memory space that had a protected kernel. It was, uh, it was a much safer, more secure, more reliable uh, product. If you were a developer, for example, and actually I was, like we talked about earlier today. Um, I switched to NT early because when I was doing things in Delphi, in particular Visual C++, um, I could actually crash the computer really hard if I was using Windows 9X, whatever version, 95 mm-hmm. or 98, whatever year it was. Um, whereas I, I, I could actually, you could actually bring NT down as well. But NT was a much more stable system. And, and a lot of the things I was doing that could crash Windows 9X would not crash uh, Windows NT. So... Um, I have a question. What very, I know, very, I know you mentioned that with NT there was a whole uh, list of hardware compatibility, uh, and they mm-hmm. had hardware compatibility issues. But what were the generally the the problem, the, the hardware that didn't work well? Are we talking? I remember. I mean, I personally well, remember ha- encountering problems, but it wasn't uh, to the bibl- biblical proportions that it was made out to be. Oh, in the beginning, it was terrible. In the beginning, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I mean, it was really terrible. Right, so the thing right. that, the, it was really bad. That, the thing that we sort of forget is um, Windows NT and Windows 9X were not in any way related, actually. They were completely different operating systems. So there was a point in early in the development of NT, like um, Microsoft, uh, the guys doing uh, Windows NT thought they were making, a, they weren't calling it Windows NT, it was NT. So they thought they were making something different. But Windows uh, 3X took off to such a degree that Bill Gates came down and said, you need to make this look and work exactly like Windows. And we're going to call it Windows NT. Like it has, this is Windows now. And mm-hmm. uh, there were some people on the NT team who hated that thought. Um, but when, when you sort of compare the two things side by side, you're like, well, okay. 
there's nothing about Windows 9X that can help on the NT side for performance. It's a different operating system. Like we, we don't have anything to learn from those guys because our system is completely different. Um, but you, when you look at other aspects of the system, it's like, well, we can make the UI look the same. And so they developed a, um, a common UI, like an NT, they came up with something called the shell update release, which made mm -hmm. NT look like windows 95 or whatever. Yeah. Um, one of the things they had to adopt from the, uh, from the windows nine X side was the, um, like the driver model, essentially, um, yeah. incompatible systems though. So it was kind of, I don't want to call it emulated. I actually don't know enough about it to be educated on this topic, but let's call it emulated just to simplify the discussion. They basically had to emulate windows nine X. So the drivers would work correctly in the beginning. Now, over time, of course, people would write drivers natively for NT, uh, natively for what became just windows. But at, in those days you had to kind of emulate, um, again, emulate is probably the wrong term, but basically emulate the Windows 9X drivers. So they didn't all work, and some yeah. of them were never going to work. It was generally yeah. printers and scanners. I remember, I mean, it was all printers and scanners. Network cards and is the one that killed me. Network like cards, I, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I had a capture card that didn't work mm -hmm. early oh, yeah. on. I had... CD um, drives, all kinds of stuff. My zip drive didn't work, I remember. Yeah. Well, by the way, I think part of the... Uh, I could be wrong about this, but let's pretend this is true. It sounds right. Like part of the push bet uh, behind uh, plug and play, no doubt, was getting to that common driver model, you know, where you could just plug something in and it would just work. I, yeah. Class drivers, whatever. Anyway, that was the plan. That never happened. Um, so Windows NT 5.0 was uh, NT. It was never going to be ready. It was never going to work. Came out as Windows 2000. The name doesn't matter. But Microsoft suddenly found themselves with this whole, like they... Windows 98 came out in 98. Windows 98 SE came out in 99. Uh, uh oh, you know, Windows 2000 isn't going to work. Uh, we can't move. And by the way, calling that thing Windows 2000 was a huge mistake because that made people think this was the next version, right? Yeah. We went from 95 to 98 to 2000. Obviously, this is the next version. Mm -hmm. Typical Microsoft. It, it, let's not pretend the problems I have with Microsoft are new to this year. I mean, this is the stuff we've been dealing with forever. Anyway, um, there were there were teams at Microsoft working on all these technologies for some future version of Windows. They couldn't make it into Windows NT 5.0. It wasn't ready. And so they said, well, why don't we put out another version of 9X, even though we said we weren't going to, you know? <laughs> and um, like I said, a lot of, it became known as Windows uh, Millennium Edition, Windows Me. Uh, was there was other a, name? What was it going to be named before that? No, it's not that it was going to be named something else. It had a code name. Um, I believe the code name was Mem. Memphis. That doesn't sound right as I say that. Memphis? I think it was Memphis. I like Memphis. that you had the Millennium Edition and the 2000 Edition. Essentially the same name. I think What's that's that? hysterical. Millennium and 2000. I mean, essentially, it's the same exact thing. Yeah, a different way of saying it. Right, yeah. there you go. Uh, this says Memphis was Windows 98. So. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I believe it was well, Memphis. <laughs> uh, Windows me, let's see. Oh, I'm looking, I can't remember this stuff. There's so many of these things. Uh, uh, list of code names. Uh, sorry, I should just know this. Millennium was... Oh, oh, sorry. Memphis was Windows 98. Millennium was just the code name. So um, I guess... I it also like that it's it. not M-E. It's not me. It's M-E. Well, it's... yeah. Everyone said Windows. It, Microsoft said Windows me. Did like, they? Like some people... Yeah, some people do say M-E, but... It, I always said M-E. Yeah, yeah, it, it's doesn't matter anyway. Um, Windows, Windows crap edition. So Windows the, the the interesting thing about Windows Millennium Edition was that it introduced a bunch of things, technologies, features, and applications that persist in Windows to this day. That anyone would rightfully say are are an important part of a modern operating system. Yeah, and. Um, and everyone acts like this thing was the biggest piece of crap, and it really wasn't. And I know some people had bad experiences with it, but the big example I have, and this was a very real world thing for me, this happened to me, is, and you know, again, people forget this stuff. Uh -huh. If you installed certain types of drivers and those drivers didn't work, it's a, it's a manufacturing you, you problem. Had, yeah. You had to operate, no, you had to reinstall the operating system. There was no way around it. You oh, yeah, recover. yeah, because it went into, the, it would just crash. It just, it would blue screen. Yeah. So this happened to me. And uh, Windows Me offered a, uh, a driver rollback functionality that let you go back to the previous driver. Now, this would work in the operating system for, you know, minor issues where, like, 
you know, wow, my modem's not, you know, responding or whatever. But it would also work at, at the very deep level. And the driver one is the is the deepest level because if that thing doesn't work back then, you were you were screwed. Um, Windows Me was the first version to offer driver rollback. You don't even kind of know it's there anymore, by the way, right? Like if you were if you brought up Device Manager today, and you look at in fact, I'll look at the display. Driver. And actually, you can roll back. Yeah, you can roll back. Of course you can. But yeah. I mean, you, we don't. We don't even sort of think about it anymore. Yeah. Like, this was such a big thing. Rollback driver is literally an option on every driver on your computer right now. That debuted in Windows Me. But it's way more than that, right? And so the article you're referencing, I went through the list of things. Microsoft, the week that I wrote this article, was promoting the fact that Cortana was going to appear in Windows Setup, in Windows 10, and guide you through Setup. That feature debuted in Windows Me, <laughs> except it was a little Merlin wizard thing, and it was the earlier Microsoft technology for that kind of um, whatever you call those things, the little avatars or whatever. But it was exactly the same thing. I, I just remember ActiveX constantly crashing. <laughs> okay. Constantly. Okay. All right. Let's not, let's not focus on that. Um, <laughs> system file protection. Yeah. Auto update, right? What's the big... Uh, uh, controversy with Windows 10, the thing that's updating all the time. Yeah. Windows Me was the first version of Windows to include auto update so that Windows would always be kept out of date, up to date. I mean, amazing, right? System restore. The ability to go back in time to a previous uh, kind of configuration, I guess, so you can fix a problem, right? Um, it was the first version of Windows to include a nice help and support interface. I don't know if you remember what Windows I do remember. help looked like yeah. before. A dialog box. Um, it supported a bunch of you know, uh, modern technologies like all versions of Windows do. But these are actually particularly interesting. Um, one of them, anyway, universal plug and play. Yeah, they did. Universal yeah. plug and play was the technology that got Microsoft into trouble with Windows XP, which, by the way, is a version of NT. <laughs> <laughs> and that thing was so bad, they had to halt development of Windows for a year to fix it. And that was the trustworthy computing in, uh, initiative. They screwed it up so bad in Windows NT, which supposedly is more reliable. So and more here's my question. Um, mm -hmm. Because I had Windows Windows ME or Windows mm -hmm. Me. And yeah. then I went to 2000 because sure. I had a lot of hardware problems. It was yeah. it was on a compact Passario that okay. had it had a capture card. It had a DSL modem. It had Andrew, two I'm not going to be able to help you with your 1999 computer. So <laughs> sorry you had those problems, but, but you need to get over it. But it was it was very it, it was it was stacked this thing, and it had a lot of I'm sure it was crap hardware. But right. my point is, when Windows ME came out, it was during that era of a lot of shitty computers being put out. Those well, you e know, machines with you know sure. Well, and we were also making everything. a transition then, yeah. right? So. A lot of people had like um, what for them would have been like old school hardware, um, a printer connected to a serial port, you know. Yeah. I mean, the, the stuff we do today that we sort of take it for, you know, for granted, um, the printer I use is network attached. I don't, you know, I don't ever load drivers. It just works, you know. Um, if I plug in a USB device today, and we're three, actually, I mean, think about it, really four generations of USB past this. Um, a, the connection speeds are incredible. The connectivity driver you know, uh, transition is immediate and unnoticed. You know, back then, most people didn't even have a USB anything. They had PS2 mice. Yeah. Parallel, or I guess, I guess parallel port printer. Sorry, not serial. Um, you could have a serial port like modem or something. Um, I, I say, I forget it's been so long, <laughs> you know, whatever. I mean, your scanner would not have attached via USB, although those were becoming available at that time, obviously. I mean, that stuff was happening, but that USB was very slow as well. Um, if you wanted to connect your camera, like a digital camera, um, to your computer to get the pictures off of it, you know, a lot of that stuff back then was all proprietary cables and stuff. It wasn't, it, there were no standards, you know. Uh, and when, actually, Windows Me was the first to, uh, to include inbox drivers for that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, this really, I mean, there's end user stuff, you know, Windows Movie Maker was the first version, Windows Media Player was the first version uh, of the modern media player. I mean, there was a, an older media player application before. Home Networking Wizard to get up and running on a broadband network uh, or a dial-up network, yeah. support internet connection sharing. I mean, the sheer amount of stuff that was in this. It was tremendous. Was yeah. actually, it was really amazing. And 
the look and feel of the system was very close to Windows 2000 because they came out roughly same time frame and they had the same desktop icons and all that other stuff. Windows 2000 was going to be more reliable, um, but it wasn't going to be as compatible, right, uh, with all of the stuff that normal people would want to use. And it didn't support a lot of these advanced technologies, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Now, of course, they, they fixed this with Windows XP and off we went and we never looked back. But, you know, for that slice in time between, let's say, 1999 and 2001, which is when Windows XP came out, you still had that same decision to make when it came yeah. to the operating system on a PC. Yeah. Compatibility, speed. If you were a gamer, you were going to go 9x. Rock solid reliability, security. You know, if you're a developer, power user, whatever. You're going to go you're with gonna 2000. Go yeah. To, or, yeah, into your 2000. Yeah, exactly. Here, you want to see what I remember from uh, Windows ME? Yep. Hang on. Let me pull Was it, it the Bill Nye, the science guy? This. Just doing yeah. this. Sure. This is if I were to. Well, that's not, so you understand that's not I know. me, right? I know. It's I know. a really poorly written device driver. I know. This is if I were to <laughs> if I were to go back and think about one thing I remember from that era of Windows. This is it. Yeah. By the way, the one thing I didn't highlight because it really it's just kind of a historical anomaly is that Windows me also didn't provide um, a way to boot into DOS natively, right? Like. Oh yeah, you're right. Previous for even even Windows 95 or 98, you, you know, there was a handoff. Like um, by that point, what MS DOS had become like a bootstrap program, like almost a um, not firmware, but what do you call it? Like it's sort of like in, in between the BIOS and the OS. There's this well bootstrap. I don't know what to call it, but like a kickstart kind of thing. Post and <laughs> what do you? Yeah, it, well, it it, it did a handoff. In other words, handoff, the, okay. the the thing that loaded from the BIOS was MS DOS. Uh -huh. And then that thing loaded win Windows, and and you know when Windows three point one days, you would it was literally a command W I N enter, and that would you know yeah, yeah, yeah. would run would run the Windows application or whatever. Um, they got rid of that and 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 uh, Windows me and yeah, yeah obviously there was a bootloader. You mean bootloader? Yeah, bootloader. Bootloader. There you go. That's the word. Kind of an interim step between firmware and OS. Um, yeah, I you know I, I I do hear from people who you know oh, I'm such a dog, it was so terrible, you know. Yeah. Okay, but uh, it, it wasn't for me, <laughs> you know. Not that it helps anyone who had problems, but um, if you you can go through, I, I published all those videos on the internet. This was Microsoft promotional materials for the press from back in 1999 or whatever year it was. Um, look, look at it. It's it's kind of incredible how much new stuff was in this thing. So this thing is kind of a lame duck. It wasn't never supposed to happen. It was like an interim release to you know buy people some time, but Seriously, like the amount of stuff that was in there, it's it is. You have to admit it's incredible. I, you know, but it was still the early days, right? It was still like the Wild West. Uh, well, yes, compared to today, it was. Yes, it, you know, we all had very. I mean, these these the screens that we were running were probably like fifteen inch tube displays with CRTs. you know. Yeah, CRTs with yeah. like you know ten twenty four by seven sixty eight resolution. Like um, there was Playing no Starcraft. sense of this. Like Starcraft, be lucky to play. It. Yeah, I'm just be that was Doom. my game, man. I loved it. Yeah, I was a Starcraft fan. Tower defense. I love playing tower defense. I still play. If I if the, I'll still play a tower defense game. Okay, it's relaxing. It, it's amazing. I like going down. Uh, just I'm looking at I'm looking at the Wikipedia system utilities and. Just features. No removed features. Real mode DOS was removed. That's what I was referring yeah. to. The, the real, like another, yeah. right. So in other words, real mode, it, it kind of, it would, I think it would like boot into real mode, then go into protected mode, I think was that how it was. Yeah, that's right? how I, it, I, I it something like that, yeah. Yeah. So in other words, you're looking at the Wikipedia entry yeah. for PC this World, thing. PC World dubbed Windows ME the mistake edition. <laughs> oh, that's not nice. <laughs> Plays it on the fourth worst tech products of all time. No, this that's is an just, exaggeration. That's that's silly. Yeah, that's it's amazing. It's amazing how far we've gotten. Yeah. What else was removed? So real mode DOS. Uh, da, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Re yeah. Remember all these like uh, right the config sys. Okay, we used to hand code this stuff, you know. 
Oh. Yeah, and its default configuration, it would not boot into an MS uh, command prompt. Yeah. Other features yeah, removed or never updated was Microsoft Fax, Quick View, Drive Space. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember Microsoft Fax. Who used it? Did anybody actually use Microsoft Fax? I'm sure people did. Net meeting, man. I'm all about it. Net meeting. What year did they kill this? NXP, right? XP was the last version with NetMeeting. NetMeeting? Yeah, G.7. Yeah, I, I suspect they pushed that stuff into uh, Messenger, right? Windows Live or MSN Messenger, or Mike, whatever they were calling it. Use G.723 and G.711 uh, for the audio. Windows Me was the last version of Windows that lacked product activation. How bad does it look now? <laughs> did it really? It was the last version? Yeah, I rem so um, <laughs> I, there's some things I'll never forget about the development of Windows XP, but we were at a reviewer's workshop where they announced they were doing product activation and the press erupted in just the nastiest. Uh, it was just the worst reaction imaginable. And eventually they were like, guys, listen, we got to move on to everything else. Can we just stop talking about this for a little while? And the plan was... They had like a product showcase after the reviewers workshop, which was a giant hotel meeting space where there were like tables and one table would be for like media player. One table would be like networking. One table would be whatever. And you could go out as in individually or in little groups and talk to the different people behind each of those parts of the product. So as soon as this <laughs> reviewers workshop ended, the entire group of whatever 50 press people, whatever it was all went to the product activation table and stood in line just to beat on this guy. Oh my God. And that poor, uh, that poor guy, I, I, uh, that night, um, I took Joe Belfiore and him and a couple of other guys, uh, out into New York for dinner and, uh, they were looking for a good place to eat. And I said, guys, obviously we're going to go to little Italy and don't worry about it. Any place we go will be great. And the thing that was really cool about this is, we ended up at a restaurant called Luna or Luna's or whatever. And Luna was the code name for the Windows XP user interface, which is what Joe Bill, if you already worked on. Oh, very cool. So he was really uh, kind of happy about that. Very, very cool. Yeah. All right, All right Paul. Time to wrap it up. <laughs> we have yes. done, we have done two and a half. We've done almost three, over three hours today, you and I. On the air. Yeah, I usually make people buy me drinks to spend this much time Jeez. with me. I'll but... buy you a drink. <laughs> I'll buy you a drink. Come up to New York. We'll go to press. We'll have a drink. <laughs> That's it, guys, for this week. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Take care.